Prior to World War I, men seldom wore watches on their wrist. Pocket watches were far more common. In the crucible of World War I trench warfare, a need for reliable and rugged timepieces emerged, leading to the birth of the iconic field watch. Field watches were the first attempt to make timekeeping meet the demands of the battlefield for the lower ranks of soldiers. They needed to be affordable, reliable, and easy to read at a glance. Let's take a look at the Timex Expedition. This is an affordable watch that has a definite field watch vibe to it. This one is in a 40 millimeter, has a press down back, is water resistant to 50 meters. So good for swimming, uh, splashing, washing the dishes, things like that. I wouldn't uh, do any more than that. I wouldn't get it soaked. The Expedition has a date complication. And on this variation, it has a dark face, but a white date. So that makes it a lot easier to read. This has Indiglo, which is very nice. Indiglo with a white dial is uh, much brighter, but still, uh, this is uh, much better than the looms that are just on the hands. So I really like Indiglo. Let's take a look at it on the wrist. Here it is on a six inch wrist. Comes with a very good strap. Uh, this one has kind of a suede finish. It's a leather strap, 20 millimeter lugs. You could easily change it out to a NATO strap and I probably will. And here is the 36 millimeter on a six inch wrist. Here's a 38 millimeter weekender on a six inch wrist. This one's on a leather NATO strap. Also has Indiglo, but with a dark uh, face. Uh, it really only shows up when it's in the dark, but it's, it's pretty bright. And here is a 40 millimeter weekender. This one, you can really tell the Indiglo a lot better with the white face. And notice this one does not have a date complication. That's only available on the Expedition. These are built in the Philippines. As I've said, it's a 20 millimeter lug to lug. They're about 11 millimeters thick. Uh, have a mineral crystal, so they will pick up some scratches. The case is brass. Uh, it's, it's thicker brass than the Weekender. So you don't hear the pronounced ticking that you will on a Weekender. So what you're getting with an Expedition over the Weekender is a little sturdier construction. You get thicker lugs and you get uh, less of that pronounced ticking. Uh, that ticking doesn't bother me. I kind of like it. Uh, it does bother my wife though. The leather strap on this one comes with a fixed keeper here and then an adjustable keeper here to catch the tag end. There is some branding on the buckle and there is quite a bit of branding on the face. Timex Expedition and in the glow and water resistant to 50 meters on the bottom, but it doesn't detract from the readability. The thing that uh, stands out about all field watches or most field watches are the uh, 12 hour numerals on the outer circle and then 24 on the inner. Although some field watches are more of a flight watch style and those there are 12 hours along the inner circle and then the minutes are ticked off in five minute increments. Uh, this is an Orient flight watch or Fleeker. So that's it. I think the Timex Expedition or the Weekender, either one, like really affordable options for a field watch. There's a lot of different variants, different colors, uh, different straps you can get. They're priced around 35 all the way up to $65. There are some higher end versions of the Expedition. Some are even have an automatic movement. Uh, but on the lower end, this was uh, $35. I caught it on sale 
uh, and it will last for many, many years. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining, and I'll catch you on the next one.